Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for um, mentioning Denali. I think between uh, yourself and our colleague from Montana and the parks in Washington, uh, that's a lot of dough <laughs> to our economy. And we certainly want to do everything we can to make sure that we're increasing access and giving a quality experience. So thank you so much for holding this hearing. Um, you mentioned Secretary Zinke's, what I thought, <laughs> ill-conceived proposal to uh, raise park fees to $70. I'm glad that the public responded to that and basically said that we were against it because I think in reality it just shows you how much the citizens of our country value parks and how much they're paying attention to this. So I'm pleased that we're having this hearing and that we are trying to tackle the backlog of deferred maintenance. As you know, we've been talking about this issue for a long time because we want to enhance the public's experience. We, re we want to rehabilitate these buildings and we want to make sure that there are park rangers there to keep the public safe. And we know that shortfalls do really erode the user experience, hurt the gateway communities, or as you said, threaten visitors as they travel through our parks. So we need to invest in the national parks. Uh, it's not only good for the outdoor economy and our citizens, but it is part of what helps our U.S. economy. That is that it's third behind healthcare and financial sectors as an economic Bureau of Economic Analysis shows that it is an important opportunity, creating over $887 billion in annual consumer spending and supports 7.6 million jobs. So if you look at what's the key ingredient to that economy, access to public lands, access to parks, so we want to continue with our investment. With over 330 million visitors annually, the national park system is that huge outdoor economy. And according to the Park Service, visitors are responsible for $35 billion in economic output, and they spend over $18 billion a year in our gateway communities. And the number of visitors is growing. In the past decade alone, the national park visitation was up 20%. I think that's very important for us to understand why that happened, what were the drivers, and what would continue to help us grow that as an increase. The, to the two most visited national parks in my state are no exception. Last year, Mount Rainier spent, um, last year, Mount Rainier National Park had nearly 1.4 million visitors who spent 50 million in our gateway communities and generated an economic benefit of $65 million. 3.4 million visitors went to Olympic National Park and had an even larger economic impact the nearby communities in the rural part of our state benefited with almost $287 million of spending. That supported over 3,800 local jobs and generated an economic benefit of almost $4 million. So to say that this is important to my state is an understatement. That's why I'm so pleased that we're uh, joined by um, Mark Bereka, who is from REI, who will be testifying today. And just like REI, who gives back to their customers. I hope that we will jointly look at our national parks as something that we give back to because that helps us move forward. As you mentioned, the Park Service is not unique to the inadequate investment in underfunded infrastructure. Uh, we certainly have a major issue with the backlog, but half of that backlog being roads and bridges I hope that the Congress writ large can discuss and communicate about why infrastructure investment inside the parks, outside the parks is a national priority and what we would be doing to increase that investment. Clearly, we think that increasing the investment here generates economic benefit. I'm sure that rest of infrastructure thinks so as well, but I hope that there is a way we could continue to think about this and codify this so our colleagues not uh, here in this committee, but those who are making those appropriation decisions would help us get this infrastructure investment for the future. We do need to make smart investments, and we need to make sure that we are enhancing the visitor experience. One of those key drivers is the Land and Water Conservation Fund, and it has supported so many enhancements uh, to our national parks over the years. 
I know it has helped us with improvements as it related to Mount Rainier and just as you were mentioning, uh, roads that wash out and then because they're not in the right place and then we have to do something. Well, either we have to keep coming up with hundreds of thousands of dollars every few years or make the major investment to make sure that it's uh, applicable to the circumstances that we're facing and gives, again, visitors the opportunity to get access to the parks in the way we want them to. So I know that um, you and I in the energy bill, working with our colleagues, made some improvements to the National Park Maintenance and Revitalization Conservation Fund as we tried to prioritize this within our legislation and within LWCF. And so I hope that we will continue to work um, with committee members. As you mentioned, there are several that are there, but I hope that uh, the work we did before and continuing the focus of this will help our colleagues see why this is such an important, comprehensive issue to be addressed by this committee. As we have been talking about, robust growth in our outdoor economy would provide more outdoor recreation jobs, opportunities for all Americans. And I think uh, continuing to focus on this would help us move forward. I know that during the Eisenhower era, they had a Mission 66 initiative to increase park funding by $1 billion over a decade. Back then, that was really a major investment. But Mission 66 recognized that we needed to improve the parks and make them accessible for a rapid growth in visitation and outdoor recreation. And I feel that we're now at that point where we should make a similar major mission investment. So I look forward to working with you and other members of this committee on this important issue. Thank you.